forth together into singing, you wasting places of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people. From the Christ who was, who is, and who is to come, grace, light, and peace be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to all of you this morning and to those joining us online. Do we have any visitors or newcomers today? We have somebody we haven't seen for a long time. <laughs> Linda is back from her travels. She's come specially to be here on the second Sunday of Advent from all the way from Australia. Welcome back. But she's anything but you. <laughs> Today starts the second week in our Advent journey. We light the candle of peace. Christ is our peace. He has broken down the walls that divide us and comes to bring the world genuine and lasting peace. <coughs> Lord Jesus, come and reign in our hearts. Respond to the prayers we offer daily. 
You know those who are earnestly seeking you and you desire your inner peace and healing. Come, Lord Jesus, touch us with your spirit. We pray for you, healing and peace. The rugged places 
a flame. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, Go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Hear the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but anyone to come to but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day of God and speed is coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, a home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience in salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God can give you. Hear the word of the Lord. Chapter 1, reading from verse 1. Glory, Glory to Christ our Saviour. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, 
but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord.
John's message of repentance in the, in the wilderness was far more familiar to that of Jesus' message. Jesus himself was also proclaiming the message of repentance. The message of repentance was not just a message saying sorry for our sins and we move on. This is not a message of sorry that we've been caught and we move on. No, it's far deeper than that. The Greek word for repentance is metanoia, meaning change of mind or change of heart or undergoing a spiritual conversion. It is a message of turning our minds back to God. It is about aligning our minds to that of Christ. Repentance is a paradigm shift in our inward thinking so that it influences our outward actions. I repeat, Repentance is a paradigm shift in our inward thinking so that it influences our outward actions. Today, the voice in the wilderness must be crying out even louder. Crying out for this world to turn away, to repent and turn away from sin. On Ash Wednesday, the start of our Lenten journey, which is not that far away, we are also reminded to repent when the priest signs us with the sign of the cross and uses these words, turn away from sin and believe the good news. On this second Sunday in Advent, we are again reminded to repent and to turn away from sin and to believe the good news. This morning we lit the candle uh, of peace and when we repent and turn away from sin, we, in essence, usher in peace. We light up the world with peace. It is when we don't repent and acknowledge our sinful ways, our sinful nature, it is a direct insult to God and His sovereign rights. And in turn, it's an indictment on God and all of God's people. Our failure to acknowledge our sinful ways and refuse to repent not only affect our lives, it affects the lives of our loved ones. It affects the lives of the ones closest to us, our families. It affects the lives of our communities. It affects the lives of our society at large. We find ourselves in the middle of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. We're in the middle of this campaign. South Africa is an extremely dangerous place for our women and our children. We have been dubbed the rape capital of the world and we have one of the largest intimate femicide in the world. In other words, women killed, women killed by current partners and spouses and close relatives. Not stats to be proud of. 
By and large, women are still objects of men. Women are still discriminated against big time. In many areas in society, women are not regarded as equal. These are the things that we as a society, especially men, need to acknowledge as wrong. Turn away from it and believe the good news. The good news that women are not objects of men. We are all made in the image of God and we all should be treated that way. As individuals and as a collective, we need to turn this around. Turn it into a situation of peace for our women and our children. A society where our women, children, the vulnerable, feel safe and secure. In our world today, we have multiple world wars happening. We have the big war between Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Palestine. The latter, where is the latter leaving this world? It leaves this world very much divided. Some are on the side of Israel, some are on the side of Palestine. Very few are on the side of peace. Notice how when world leaders are not prepared to be that voice in the wilderness, not prepared to usher in the Messiah, usher the, usher the Messiah into a world of peace. How divided this world becomes. How messy a place this world becomes. Why is this the case, we might say? The point I want to make he said, our sins are not always personal. It is not always just between us and God. It is sometimes wider than that. It impacts on society as a collective. It impacts on the world at large. And we suffer as a society. We suffer as a world because of our sinful ways. And we said this, repentance starts with the individual. It starts with me. If I don't repent, it will impact me. Often impacts our families. It often impacts my community, society at large. And so it is today. Mark in this morning's gospel narrative, starts with these words. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. Stating that Jesus is the one ushering in a new era of humanity for humanity. Emphasizing the truth that embraces the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is embracing a new life, a new beginning. My friends, let us, let us embrace this new beginning, repenting and believing the good news, using this advent to do some introspection and disconnect from the old and move towards the new. John had some very harsh words for the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, uh, of their faith. Sorry, of the Sadducees as they believed their heritage and their pious observations of their faith was enough. Let none of us believe that our lives are okay. 
and there is no reason for repentance. <coughs> Let repentance be a point of departure where we will make straight the path of God in our own lives and in the lives of others. Amen.
loving God give rest to those who have gone from our lives to be with you. May they now live the eternal, may they, live, may they now live the life eternal and rest in everlasting peace in your presence. Strengthen the bereaved with the knowledge of your loving presence in this time of, of greatest need. Remember those especially close to us. Lord, in your mercy. Holy yeah. God, we ask you to help us make time for true preparations this advent. In the midst of the rush of life, help us to find in your quietness and an awareness of your presence. Let this Christmas be a time when we concern ourselves not so much with material things, but focus on the spiritual gifts, even the same selfish. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender compassion of our Lord, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. <coughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you.
blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen.
Gracious Lord, accept us in him, unworthy though we are, so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness. With whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever.
Krista. Give thanks, for the Lord is gracious. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world, and will send him again to be our judge. Give us grace, so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday again in the early service. <laughs> it's our last week's leave by mistake. <laughs> this is genuinely the second Sunday of Advent. Um, we have quite a number of birthdays to celebrate. Uh, tomorrow it is Zoe Otto's 18th birthday, and it is also Bradley Adams' birthday, but he's not 18. <laughs> and then later in the week, David Abrahamza, Ernest Sadler, Hassi Manan, Fanny Masagano, Tony Bent, Paul McCready, Penny Rose. Mike Walker, Jane Dove, Jane Dunn, Elizabeth Maddox, and Oliver Zahr. Well, you're not 18 either. <laughs> um, probably not. Um, we pray to God for each of you as you celebrate your birthdays. We give thanks for you and the part you play within the life of this church and the wider church. And we pray that God will bless you and guide you into this new year of your lives. We have several anniversaries to celebrate as well. Uh, Ian and Lillis McDonald. Alan and Lindsay Bell, France and Elizabeth Maritz, and Stephen and Lee Johnson. We pray for them and for all celebrating their anniversaries at this time, that God will continue to bless them and to let the love which they have for each other grow and be a demonstration of his love for them and for us. This is also the time of the year when we have various um, anniversaries of ordination to celebrate. Uh, of particular note, uh, Harry Wiggins celebrates the 60th, yes, 60th anniversary of his ordination as a deacon um, in a few days' time, 60 years as a deacon, uh, a servant of God, a servant of the church. We give thanks to God hugely for him, for all that he's been, not only to this parish, but to other parishes where he served, and to the community at Narina where he continues to serve. Uh, so I know he's not here now, but uh, we continue to pray for him and give thanks to God for him. But also, uh, the, those others who are celebrating anniversaries of uh, ordinations to the Diaconate, <coughs> Val Emery, John Fry, and Errol Sadler. And then uh, ordinations to the priesthood, John Fry, Val Emery, and Errol Sadler again. We give thanks to God for them and for their ministry here and in various other places that they've served. But you don't have an ordination anniversary coming up as well. <laughs> Shouldn't you be on this list as well? <coughs> A couple of weeks ago, all right, we did that. So, um, so we give thanks, we, we're so blessed here to have a good number of retired clergy, uh, people who can assist and who can still follow God's call to the sacred ministry within the life of this congregation. Thank you to all of you, and blessings for those who are celebrating their anniversaries. Sunday school. Come and tell us what you've been doing. Today is the last day of Sunday school for this year, and so as you can see, our Sunday school children are very, very excited. Thank you. 
Yeah. Can I stand in front of everyone and see that? Yeah. 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 This is a lovely little book for you to say that we love you. Mm. And Brady, this is a bigger book because you're a big brother to bring. I love you. That's a lovely book for you because we love you. Amelia, where are you? There you are, Amelia. Come to the front so everyone can see you. Okay, well, this is a lovely book for you because we love you too. Gavin, is Gavin Gavin's here too? No. Uh, Arma, where are you? Arma? I have a book. Don't be shy. Arma, this is a come stand at the front so people can see you. There you are. Arma, this is a lovely book for you. Because we love you and God loves you. together 
you know it's going to end up in a drunken argument and everybody gets upset and you don't want to do it. Um, so Christmas for you may not be a happy time for that reason, or for whatever reason. For some people, Christmas brings feelings of anxiety and sadness. And it's very, it's maybe more difficult, but everybody around you is trying to make you go, oh, 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 all the time. This evening, the service that we have called Blue Christmas is so that we can come and honestly say to God, this is how I'm feeling. I'm not going to pretend to be happy when I'm not. I'm not going to pretend that I don't have these feelings of sadness or loss. I'm going to come and be honest with God about that. And God who comes to us in Jesus, in the incarnation, comes and accepts us as we are, not as who we have to pretend to be. So come to this service. If, if Christmas is difficult for you, then come to this service and you will have a sense of peace and comfort and rightness about it. If Christmas is not difficult for you, if you're having a way of the time and expect to have a great time, come as well, because you can come and support and pray for those who find it more difficult. So at 6 o'clock this evening, Blue Christmas for you. Next Sunday evening is our service of nine lessons in carols. It's the first time we will sing Christmas carols in church. We don't sing them through our bed normally. Um, that's at 6 o'clock next Sunday evening. It's always a very well attended service. So come uh, at 6 o'clock. And it will be followed by Sherry and Mince Pies in the church hall afterwards. And uh, there will be an alternative to Sherry if you don't watch Sherry. You may find something in the alternative to Mince Pies because you don't like those. Apparently, there are people who don't eat Mince Pies. So. <laughs> it's a mystery to me. Uh, a reminder about our stationary collection for Massey Court. Um, you remember that each year we collect stationery for the Massey Core Early Childhood Development Centre. There are several of them in Massey. And they're so, so grateful because that means the children can have the things they need for the coming year. So the box is at the back of the church, and there's a list pasted to the box of all the items that we need. Please have a look at that. Please put something in the box at some time over the next couple of weeks. And then when the schools open in January, we will donate everything we received to Massey Core. After church, there will be tea. Please go over to the hall and continue to enjoy the fellowship over there. And if you would like Andrew to pray with you about anything at all, please make your way to the Lane Chapel and uh, he will happily pray with you privately and confidentially. Uh, there's one more announcement to make. Uh, Rochelle would like to say something. Father Andrew and I got locked in a cage at the hall. And we had the opportunity to talk about his holiday. And imagine how excited he is. Imagine how excited we are that he's actually managing to leave the precinct this holiday season. Father Andrew, we know that um, you haven't been away for a good break. During the school holidays, you see us, so we never have that wind down. Um, you bump into us in the supermarkets, you bump into us here, you bump into us in the village. So as you pack in your car, which day is going to be full, know that you have packed the entire St. Margaret's family to go with you in the form of 13 and a half thousand rand. There might be some more, we don't know, but we thought we'd best let you know now in case you need to make any changes to your holiday plans. And we know that it's quite difficult to get a book into Zipline. So you might want to book in Zipline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
prepared to go out into the world to shine with the light of Christ. We pray together. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. You fill us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen. God bless Africa. God our children, guide our leaders, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path. And make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.